our holy and wonderful God, the hope of all mankind. We praise you for this another moment in time where we can come before you, God, with steadfast confidence in you and your love for us. May the mercies of the Godhead give us hope beyond this world. Amen. Hope is the expectation that the desired thing will happen. The embers of hope light dark corridors and warm cold dreams back to life. Whether it is a flood or a drip of hope, it re-energizes the human spirit. But hope must have an anchor and its strength depends on who or what it is anchored in. The Apostle Paul counsels us in 1 Peter 1 verse 13. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. I know the wife of Elcano had an internal and an external battle fighting. The extent of her grief made it all seem hopeless. Not even the affection of her husband brought her relief. 1 Samuel 1 verse 5 reads, But to Hannah he would give a double portion, for he loved Hannah, although the Lord had closed her womb. The although the Lord had closed her womb is the internal struggle. In Hannah's days, a woman was defined by her ability to have children and to think that her God, the loving God who her husband served as a priest, had closed her womb was hard to bear. I can imagine the questions in her head all the time. Why am I not good enough to be a mother? And as the enemy always does, he rubs salt in our wounds. Her nemesis was Penina, the other wife. Verse 6 says, And her rival also provoked her severely to make her miserable because the Lord had closed her womb. Internal struggle and external woes, a perfect combination for hopelessness. In one moment of desperation, when food could not even pass her throat, she went to her God in bitterest anguish and tears, says the scriptures. After her prayers and the de facto blessing of Eli, the high priest, verse 18 reads, And she said, Let your maidservant find favor in your sight. So the woman went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. No longer sad. Hope created expectation. Her expectation was a son that she would offer to the Lord in service. For a people in slavery, hope gave them something to look forward to, something outside of the norm. The song, I've got a crown up in a dark kingdom, ain't that good news, is one that's pregnant with hope, the kind of hope that made their suffering pale and it calmed their confusion. The Negroes were no stranger to worshiping the God of creation. Scholars tell us that Sabbath keeping, songs of praise, stories of what God did for humanity have all been found in ancient African scrolls and relics and even in the very languages of some tribes. But in that moment, they were confronting evil like never before. And this was all made worse by the cloak of Christianity that many wore. How could they reconcile the evil from the same people who claimed Christianity? They stayed focused on God and his plans for them. And so they sang. In fact, they proclaimed the certainty of a future hope, totally unlike their day-to-day reality of enslavement. The song says, I've got a crown in that kingdom. Ain't that good news? I'm going to lay down this world, going to shoulder up my cross, going to take it home to Jesus. Ain't that good news? Good news indeed. 
It was and it is the central theme of the gospel. They resolved in their hearts that the trouble of this world could not destroy their hope. So they kept on singing, Soon I will be done with all the trouble of this world. I'm going home to be with God. No more weeping and wailing. I'm going home to be with God. And these songs were not about escaping the reality of the time or pretending their troubles were not there. No, there were songs that enabled them to fight, to stand up and declare, I'd rather be dead than go on being a slave. These songs gave them fire in their souls and strength in their bodies because it allowed them to fix their heart on minds on someone that the oppressor could not obscure. And that person was Jesus Christ. Jeremiah 29 verse 12 is one of the most popular verses because it's so direct and personal. I know, says God, the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. But have you noticed that these words were written to an enslaved people? It sure was. Verse 1 of Jeremiah 29 reads, This is the text of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the surviving elders among the exiles and to the priests, the prophets, and all the people Nebuchadnezzar had carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. The Negro slaves knew this truth. And they buried in their souls the words of God that I know the plans I have for you. And this truth was good, good news that solidified their hope. Most of us don't know what it's like to want to escape our very existence. We cannot imagine the agony of wishing that sleep would never end, of dreading your very next moment. Yet, we find it so difficult sometimes to be hopeful, to express joy with life and exuberance for tomorrow. Why? Could it be that we have missed the good news, that we have trivialized the promises of God? Let me ask you, what do you sing in response to pain and confusion? When the billows seem to roll just for you and your family, What is your shake it off response? It should be the good news that Jesus is preparing to have you in his father's kingdom. John 14 verse 3 tells us, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. And how about his promise of permanent presence In your life, God says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Deuteronomy 31 verse 6. These are solid foundations on which to build our hope. Misplaced hope is worse than no hope at all. God's children, even while in the horrors of slavery, had hope in the kingdom and in the glory to come. They had hope that the horrors of this world cannot touch. They were insulated by their hope of God's kingdom. These ancient, unsophisticated songs of a Negro cause us to hold on to hope. You have a crown. I have a crown. We all got a crown in that kingdom. Ain't that good news? I say it is. And so does the Apostle Timothy in 2 Timothy 4 verse 8. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Ain't that good news? Let us pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the good news that birthed hope in those whose bodies were enslaved. Thank you, God, for the same good news that gives hope to those whose minds may be shackled by sadness and brokenness and sin. 
In you, we have hope. Through you, we have hope. And our hope is all because of you, because you are the God of our salvation. And thus we say, Amen and Amen.